The Pokemon TCG Live Global Beta recently finished rolling out, offering players a chance to try out an early updated version of the successor to the now decade old Pokemon TCG Online. And while there are plenty of things to get excited about, like the new in-game economy, the proper mobile support, anyone who's been following this game's development knows it's been, well, rocky to say the least. The issues that were previously plaguing the game in its initial rollout were so bad that content creators and competitive players abandoned it entirely to go back to PTCGO, which, even ignoring live, is a game that already was grossly behind the curve compared to the other online clients of popular card games. In fact, the problems have been so bad that even gaming media and the broader gaming audience has started to take notice. But the silver lining is that Live's development team has had their ears to the ground, taking in all the community's harsh, but in my opinion, necessary feedback. They even dropped a blog update showing off its reworked game board and detailed some of their goals going forward that were a direct result of the feedback they've received. And even though I already made a video earlier this year pointing out many of the things I thought needed addressing in time for its final launch, I still wanted to check in and give you guys some updated thoughts on how this beta has progressed in that time. Make no mistake, this game still has a long way to go. But after getting in plenty of hours with this updated build, I'm here to tell you I still believe that Live's future is one you should still be optimistic for. But let's go ahead and tackle the Gigantamax Caparaja in the room here. That's the game board. Since the last time I checked in with Live, the game board has had a serious rework, at least on the desktop version. The prior version had way too much negative space, was far too simplistic, and only displayed your bench Pokemon as these small condensed squares. I'm happy to say what we have in this updated build is definitely an improvement on all of these fronts. Though as an aside, I personally kind of like the old white center of the game board. Maybe we can have a light and dark theme selector in the future. Just a thought. But anyways, despite these improvements, some long-standing issues with the game's presentation are still unfortunately present. Opponents' Pokemon still face the wrong direction, and in a game like the Pokemon TCG, where the direction of your card directly impacts gameplay, I believe this decision is still a mistake to stick with going forward. It'd be one thing if the cards on your opponent's field were readable, but since you have to enlarge them to be able to read them anyways, there's really no benefit from making them face towards you. Another notorious issue has been the low-res versions of cards that appear during certain actions in a match. Damn! Seriously, how is this still in the game? I sense this is the type of issue that would typically be addressed by the official launch, but it's still worrisome to see all these months later. As I pointed out in my last video critiquing live, foil effects are also still in need of another pass. I said before they look much more like the fake Pokemon cards you get off sites like Wish than their actual IRL counterparts, and it's still true. Currently, this is another area where PTCGO is outshining its successor where it really has no business doing so. So while the new game board is no doubt a bit better, Pokemon TCG Live's overall graphical fidelity and presentation is still just a few notches below what its competition is doing. Just taking a quick glance at some of these other games on the market makes this abundantly clear. Whether it's lighting, battle animations, the game board, etc., the fidelity still isn't where it needs to be. Now, Live certainly doesn't need to look as good as a AAA console title, but ideally should lead the pack of all these digital card games, or at least meet parity, since it's being tethered to a brand as massive as Pokemon. But presentation woes aside, how is the game actually playing these days? A big criticism from players before was the agonizingly slow speed of the game's animations. And I'm happy to report this is something that has had a noticeable improvement since the previous build, with one small caveat. The card animations certainly are faster, but they almost feel too fast now? Maybe it's just more so that the original animations weren't intended to be this fast, and as a result look a little bit silly at this new speed. So maybe they could be reworked to look more natural and less jerky at the new game speed. I'm not exactly sure, but either way, this is an amazing improvement just from a functionality standpoint. Now, what unfortunately hasn't been fixed in this build of the game is still the insistence on click and drag functionality. Going from PTCGO, which does support click functionality in addition to click and drag, and then to PTCG Live was honestly really jarring for me. Click and drag is fine for the mobile version of the game, and I do actually want to shout out, it does work pretty well over there. But on desktop, there absolutely needs to be support for normal click functionality. The game is just so much more clunky without it. And on top of that, scroll wheel functionality currently is also still sorely missing from gameplay. Whereas on PTCGO, TCGO, I can quickly scroll through my deck when searching it. On live, I have to individually click the right and left buttons to get to the cards I want to grab or see. And while we're on that note, to view non-valid targets when searching your deck, you have to manually toggle them on. This certainly isn't a deal breaker, but PTCGO just handles this much better by eliminating the need for additional clicks or actions and just placing these cards after your valid targets. This combined with the lack of scroll functionality I just mentioned makes this 
such a slog to check the other cards that are still in your deck, especially things like energy that would be at the end. But there are also some small quality of life improvements that I really don't think have gotten enough credit. I really like how the end turn button is now a separate button on the side of the screen, as opposed to the done button from PTCGO. Maybe this is just me, but I can't count how many times I accidentally pressed the done button, thinking I was going to end some sort of ability I was in the middle of using, and instead accidentally ended my turn. Then there are also a few time-saving features I've grown to enjoy, like the large HP indicators. While more competitive players like myself are already pretty familiar with how much max HP most Pokemon have, newer players no longer have to enlarge the cards to quickly see this. But one thing I really have found useful is that the game automatically updates the damage of your attacks to reflect any damage modifiers you might have. Whereas on PTCGO, only your attack's base damage is going to be shown. Again, nothing groundbreaking, but these sorts of quality life features definitely don't go unnoticed for me. So there is some encouraging progress on the game's battle system, but I still wanted to check in and see how its other systems are shaping up. By far, one of the most exciting parts about Live is the introduction of its brand new in-game economy. The game uses three different currencies, coins for buying cosmetic items for your avatars and decks, crystals for buying cards in the shop, and then credits for crafting cards. And before I even spent a single one of these currencies, upon booting up Live for the first time, I had instant access to a number of mostly built competitive decks, including the brand new Lukia V-Star. And just by progressing through the first several tiers of the game's free battle pass, I already started unlocking the rest of the pieces I needed to improve the deck. I can't stress enough how much of an improvement on PTCGO's ladder system this is. By far the best part of this new economy though is the introduction of its crafting system. Once you obtain a place out of a card in the game, any additional copies acquired after are automatically converted into credits you can use to craft any card that you want. As someone who has spent more time than they have wanted in the public trade section of PTCGO trying to scrape together what I needed for a deck, I'm really excited for this new system to completely bypass that sort of tedium that slowed down deck building. However, currently you can't manually choose to convert any unwanted cards into credits. So this means if you pull an unplayable rainbow rare from a pack you obtained on the battle pass, well, you're stuck with it and are forced to obtain a full playset before any additional ones are converted into credits. The big draw of the crafting system is that it allows you to dispose of unnecessary cards, and I think this current fault in the system really does go against that core design philosophy. So unless this gets changed and or the amount of credits you get per card transferred increases, there's a part of me that still worries that building your second, third, or fourth deck might be a lot slower than people were hoping. And while on the topic of credits, one gripe I do have is the various currencies that are in the game. As I mentioned, right now there are three currencies but honestly the first two kind of feel redundant and seem like they could easily just be merged into one, which would remedy some of the confusion that is currently part of this system. The other issue this could solve is the utter lack of good ways of earning crystals, the second currency I mentioned, which is used to buy cards in the shop. Now to be fair, there are a lot of crystals to be earned in the premium battle pass, but just guess what currency you have to use to get the premium battle pass. Yes, crystals. There's no other way to obtain it. And this is a shame too, because there are genuinely good products to buy in the game shop. Whereas PTCGO largely just sells individual packs, Live also sells a variety of other products like pre-constructed decks, promo card bundles, and more. Currently, it almost feels like the stingy distribution of these crystals is balanced as if this were some sort of game that was trying to funnel me into buying them via microtransactions instead. Of course, right now there are none in the game, which is a separate topic altogether, but one I actually wouldn't mind exploring a little bit more on the channel in the future. So if that's a video you'd like me to do, maybe leave a like on the video or let me know down below in the comment section. Coins, on the other hand, seem to be giving out in abundance, but honestly, I will probably spend very few of them on any of the avatar cosmetics they can purchase. I will say though, I actually have grown not to mind the avatars as much as before. Torches! Get your torches! It's for don't get me wrong, I still am adamant that their art style should be more in line with the anime-inspired look from the rest of the franchise, but they are still unequivocally better than the early 2000s abominations that are on PTCGO, and I really do appreciate the additional player expression they allow for, specifically the catchphrases and emotes that you can use in a match. So maybe they can even add support for additional emotes or catchphrases in the shop, and I'd also like to see support for socks and color options for eyebrows, both of which, as far as I can tell, are oddly missing in the customization options. The final aspect of the game I wanted to check in on was the game's deck builder and UI, which both had their own share of issues in the past. But unfortunately, I think this is the one area of the game that has honestly progressed the least. Now, don't get me wrong. I actually think the UI and menus of the game look great and are a massive step up from PTC Joe in that regard. But as nice as they look, functionality is just where they start to fall apart. This is most apparent when it comes to deck building and viewing cards in your collection. 
And in fact, there's still no collection menu. If you want to view what cards you own, you have to build a deck or go into, get this, the shop menu. Yes, you heard that correctly. While I appreciate there is a link to your collection there, presumably so you can quickly figure out what packs you might want to buy from the shop, I don't think I need to explain why this is bad as the primary way of viewing your collection. The deck building UI also still has the same issues as the previous beta build, with my biggest complaint still being the lack of an option to expand your deck to view all 60 cards. And what's crazy is this is a feature that actually exists on the mobile version of the game, but on desktop, you're forced to view your deck in sections while your collection takes up nearly three quarters of the rest of the screen real estate. Honestly, this is probably the thing that deters me from making content on the platform. It's horrible for content creators since you guys can't easily see what deck is being shown off, but it's just bad for community engagement since players can't quickly screenshot a list to drop on social media, Discord, group chats, etc. Not only is the deck building UI itself a little bit clunky to navigate, but from what I can tell, there also doesn't seem to be any sort of way to discard changes you've made to your deck. So if you get really deep into massively changing your deck, only midway to the size, you don't really like how it's coming along. You have to memorize all of the changes you have made up until that point and manually reverse them or be forced to live with your alterations. This caught me so off guard to the point where I'm honestly surprised I haven't seen more people mention this. But at the end of the day, I do still just want to remind everyone this is a beta. Now, normally when creators say this about flawed video game betas, it drives me insane. Most AAA video games that put out betas aren't really even betas. They're more so just glorified demos the company puts out a month before launch with very little changes happening between then and the final release. Live's beta has really been a true beta in the sense that it came out far before its official launch. And we've already seen pretty big progress between its last build of the game and this current one. Maybe that's just hopium on my part, but if the things in their blog update are true and they are gonna fix some of these other issues that people have been complaining about, the final product just might come together. And really that's the biggest reason I'm still optimistic for this game. Fundamentally, I think they have shown a real willingness to listen to the community and try to get this thing right. And I really do want them to, as nailing this game really could be a massive moment for the TCG to expand to a broader audience. For that reason, I really encourage you guys to become active in the conversation to help shape the future of this game, because I can tell you personally that TPCI is listening. So feel free to comment down below what your experience with the game has been thus far and what you still think it needs by launch to be a success. And if you haven't tried this updated version of the beta yet, I'll be sure to drop a link down below in the description for you. But if you guys did enjoy today's content, be sure to leave a like on the video. And if you're feeling a little bit extra generous and want to take that support to the next level, you can always become a patron at patreon.com slash rarecandytcg or pick up some merch at rarecandytcg.com. But as always, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.